view of this heads up display I bought. Um, so you can see it up there. It's just a really simple little guy. The package came in a bubble wrapped bag and then this was inside that bag. And what you get is the heads up display itself, um, the cable, the OBD2 cable, which I neatly tucked away. Um, this little stand um, that it kind of like snaps in, um, but I think it's useless. Like the only thing it would do, <clears throat> it would basically sit like this when you're driving, so you couldn't see the top of the, the heads up display itself. Only the reflection on the windshield, um, but that's silly. I don't know. I just thought it was unnecessary looking. Um, it also comes, like I said, with the cable, and then it comes with these two reflective um, screen shield things. Um, so the ad states that you don't need them because, I don't know, the instructions say you don't really need it. I don't really agree with that because um, I can't stand because you no matter what you use you're going to see like a double display because there's two panes of glass for your windshield um, so they come with these little these little guys like this um, the one that's on my windshield now is from a different heads-up display I had purchased um, so but these look exactly the same so I, I imagine they would work exactly the same um, the reason I switched from the other one I had, I had the X5, which is another one of these like really cheaply made Chinese heads up displays. Um, I mean, you can even tell how cheaply made it is. Um, the instructions, the first half of the instructions are in Chinese, which I don't speak any of. And then the second half um, is English, but it's fairly broken. Um, but the reason I still picked this guy is because of how simple it is, and the, the letters are a little bit bigger than the uh, the X5. Um, I don't like all the ridiculous looking information up there. I just want to see my speed. Um, like, the, the water temperature was nice on my other one, um, but I just liked a little bit of cleaner look. Um, so, it's basically got one button on it. Um, it's like a rocker button that you can also push in. So I'll go ahead and turn on the car. Well, first I'll show you how I installed it. Um, so you'll install it on the, I don't know if you can see under here, there's the OBD2 port, which is where it should be right underneath your steering wheel. Um, you plug it in there, and then you've got this little black cable that runs up to the unit. So I popped off this side piece here which on most cars where your fuse box is, but mine's under the hood. So I popped that off and then I fed from underneath there, I fed the, uh, the cable up through a little hole here and then I ran it up along this edge so you can barely see it. Um, I like the clean look there. And then uh, hid all the extra cable. The cable's probably six feet long, but obviously you don't need six feet to get from there to there. Um, and then I popped that back on. So to get that off, I had to take off my weather guard. But, you know, depends on your car. Um, so, let's try turning it on here. Um, this plays really nicely. Uh, when you turn the car on, it senses the, the voltage. And then, bam, there you go. You're already ready. Set up for your miles an hour. Um, I'll post another. Well, here we go. Um, so if you want to get to the settings, you just click the rocker button in. Whoops. Click and hold the rocker button in, and it gives you this. And then it goes through, and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, those all, if you look at your instructions, they tell you what those buttons mean. Um, so the one you really want to leave alone is the brightness. I like mine on the automatic because <laughs> at nighttime, the brightness that it's at right now would be really distracting. Um, you'll want to change one to two if you're in the US and you use miles per hour or imperial units. Um, I'm not really sure what transport protocol means. Um, select car, do as it says I guess, and then speed calibration is the important one. So what you'll want to do is you want to plug this guy in, 
Um, so anytime you change something, you'll click on it. So you select which one you want to change. So for instance, speed calibration is four. Select it, click the button in, and then it'll give you a value. Um, mine I had to bring down to 102 for a 2013 Chrysler 200. Um, and then to save it, you click it again. Once you see four, you can click and hold. And what that does is it saves the settings. And you're good to go. Um, in case you're wondering about the longevity of these guys, I had the other one I had for probably about a year and a half just sitting in my uh, my dashboard in Virginia and South Carolina. Um, so getting pretty hot. I mean, right now, it's not even that hot outside, but that thing's pretty toasty. Um, and they really don't have an issue. Um, so let's put the seat belt on here. I mean, you can see it, it updates really quickly. I wish there was a good way for me to do this, but let's see. It's very accurate and easy to read. And then there's not like a really big lag or anything with it. Now that's probably more based on your car than it is the heads up display. If you were noticing a lag, it would probably be due to um, the speed of which your CAN bus, like you're the refresh rate on there. Um, but mine has no issues and then it, it works really well. Um, so I'm actually a really big fan of this product so far um, and I'd recommend it to anybody. I'm probably gonna get my girlfriend to try to use it because she speeds a lot and although she's only gotten one ticket before, um, it'll be kind of good to keep make sure she doesn't get any more. So to calibrate your display, your uh, your speed display there, it'll come automatically set at 108. It actually tells you that. Um, so what you want to do is you want to drive at a speed. So I'll pick, um, and you'll be able to pretty easily tell when it's wrong. So you'll pick like uh, you're trying to get 20 miles an hour on there, and look up, and if it's 20 miles an hour, obviously you're good. Now. The way that works is it's um, there's a there's a value that your your computer's CAN bus um, your car's computer I should say um, describes for your speed. So then what your heads-up display does is it assigns like a multiplier to that to get what the speed is up there. So a value of one, or sorry, 100 would be like a multiplier of one. So it's already perfectly accurate, it's good to go. Um, it comes at 108 because speedometers are usually a little off, but so you can make the argument that, well, the CAN bus is more accurate than your speedometer, so you should just leave it alone, but I prefer to make a match. Um, so because it's a multiplier, um, the faster you drive, the more noticeable that difference is going to be. So even though it's accurate at 20 miles an hour, it probably won't be accurate at 70. So what you want to do is you want to bring it up to 20 and set it, and then, or 25, 30, you know, whatever. I went out to the local highway, got up to 50, um, had to change it again, and I've yet to get up to 100, or sorry, not 100, 70, you know, interstate speed or whatever. Um, but pretty easy to use, and then there you go, it clicks off once the car's off. Um, so the X5, I had to manually set the voltages at which it turned on and off, but this guy automatically um, is just taking care of it. So that's pretty sweet. Um, big fan of this car.